All right, so listen up. Part A, I got a strain of 0 0.00028.1. All right, did y'all get that? Maybe we could do inches per inch, or we could leave it unitless. For part B, I got a, a strain, a shear strain, 0 0.01417 radians. Uh, we might have done that. All right, so now let's pick up uh, to where we are. Uh, you know how I, th I think we had only been focusing on normal stress strain diagrams, but the shear stress strain diagram is similar. It has similar regions in general. It has an elastic region. It has a yielding region. All right. And the slope of the normal stress strain curve is E. The slope of the shear stress strain curve is G. All right, this is G. Uh, we'll, we'll fill that in our notes. It is the modulus of rigidity. All right, so maybe I'll get that. Or the shear modulus. Modulus of rigidity or the shear, shear modulus. And you could probably guess this. If we load it up to here, which we are about to do, right, it unloads, you could have guessed this, at a, at a slope of G. Pretty cool, right? So whether we're doing normal or shear loading and unloading, it's the same process, right? It's the same process. Either we're going to be told the strain, which is this problem, we're told the strain. I mean, not explicitly told it. We had to, from the figure, we were told the strain. All right, so if we know the strain and we've got a stress-strain diagram, we can find the stress. So I think that's what part C is uh, calculate the shear stress required to cause this strain in the figure of 0.01417. So if this value is 0.01417, uh, question mark, you know, what, what is the tau? What is the shear? Uh, you could do it, do it a, a number of different ways. I, this is how I interpolate, and I'll give you, some, hopefully we'll have time for some practice. Um, I would do, listen up. So you can kind of look at these, these three uh, spots on the x-axis, three spots on the y-axis. If you know this point here for sure, and you know that point there for sure, and you know the x-coordinate of that point, then you can find the y-coordinate. All right, mine would look like 60 minus 40 over tau minus 40 equals 0 0.02 minus 0 0.005 over uh, 0.04. 417 minus 0 0.005. And so because of fractions, you know, you could flip both of these sides of the equations. As long as you flip both sides of the equations, you'll be fine. Sometimes you can flip. As long as you're very consistent, here's the thing, though. You need to make sure that that uh, point corresponds with that point, right? The 60 corresponds with the point 02, right? That would be this pink dot right here. How about in green? The 40 corresponds with the 0 0.005, right? That's this green dot. And this blue dot that we're looking for, the tau corresponds. So as long as you got them in the same spot on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of our equations, generally, uh, you could do it or just get your calculator interp function. That's fine, too. Make sure your answer makes sense. Does 52.2 uh, KSI make sense? Yeah. You know what doesn't make sense? If you had told me that the tau was 12.2, you know, no, that's, that's it's between 60 and 40. Uh, it's 52.2. All right. So that, that is the tau while it is being loaded. Or that's the tau when it is being sh stressed and strained. And then part D is unloading. Part D is unloading. You'll do problems like this in, uh, uh, recitation next week, something to look forward to. So if you're unloading and, you know, Andrea, if you do this differently, that's fine. You can do it differently, teach differently. If y'all see a structure free or anybody else who uh, teaches this differently, that's fine. You know, if you get the right answer, uh, you're, you're good. But it unloads at a slope of G. And so I like to look at this and I call it the unloading triangle. That unloading triangle would have a height of what? 52.2, right? 
right? A base of the elastic recovery, not the elastic region, the elastic recovery, and a slope of G. Um, and, and you know, it is similar to that triangle. So you might think about it as similar triangles, um, part D. All right, so what is G anyway? Well, it is 40 over 0 0.005, so whatever value that is. And so that would equal 52.2 over the elastic recovery. All right, so the elastic recovery is 0 0.0065 radians. And maybe that's my answer if it asks, what is the elastic recovery, you know, in radians? That would be my answer. What, what does the question ask for? Determine the elastic, okay, so yeah, that's part of determine the elastic recovery and the permanent deformation. What is the permanent deformation? All right, well, listen up. If I started right here at 0 0.01417 and I recovered 0 0.0065, then whatever's left would be the permanent deformation. So 0 0.01417 minus 0 0.0065. Uh, so I'm permanently deformed 0 0.0077 radians. So that's a permanent set or permanent deformation. All right, the permanent set or the permanent deformation.